It's Thursday, the 26th of September, you bad motherfuckers. Greetings from Podcastville. The Church of What's Happened Now is brought to you by my bookie. Listen, it, we're going on week three, week four. I don't fucking know. If you find the yardstick on the street, would you pick it up or would you keep walking? Obviously, you'd bend over and pick it up. So why do you keep picking winners and you're not betting them? Let me tell you something. There's no more fucking calling your bookie and talking in code and the gray cavalier. I got the answer to all your fucking dilemmas. My bookie. Listen, it's easy and they pay when you win. Let's face it. Where you're betting is as important as who you're betting on, correct? If you're trying to bet on the NFL, baseball, MMA, whatever, my bookie's got it. So do me a favor right now. Double your first deposit today. Use promo code CHURCH. C-H-U-R-C-H to get a 100% bonus on your initial deposit up to $1,000. Who's better than you? Nobody. Visit mybookie.ag today. That's mybookie.ag. And don't forget to use promo code CHURCH when creating your account to claim the bonus. And tomorrow, check my Instagram at Matt Flavors World. I'm dropping a video from my bookie to teach you a few things. The church is also brought to you by Upstart. Listen. It's very easy to get into debt, but it's even harder to get out of debt, especially when your credit score is not great. Upstart could help you. Upstart goes beyond the traditional credit score. Your upstart interest rate is based on your education and job history, not your credit score. Listen, it's time to consolidate your debt and put it into one monthly payment with Upstart. Today, right now, See why Upstart is ranked number one in that category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot. Hurry to upstart.com slash church, C-H-U-R-C-H, to find out how low your upstate rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes. Upstart.com slash church. The church is also brought to you by my personal favorite, On It. Listen, starting today, right now when I talk to you, if you order a 30 count or a 90 count of Alpha Brain or the powder, they're going to send you a raffle ticket. It's going to automatically win like a coupon or you might win a kettlebell or something like that. But it also registers you for the island experience. You're like, Joey, what's the island experience? Four days in Austin, Texas. They fly you down there. You stay at the island house. They train you. They give you one-on-one, two one-on-ones. They take you to a barbecue joint. They give you $500 cash. Plus, they give you total human for one year, alpha brain for one year, a set of kettlebells, club bells. Listen, go to honor.com right now and press in. Church. And get your alpha brain right now. That's that flagship product. It works with memory and focus, and it's the way to go. Go to honor.com right now and get some alpha brain and register. Take it into the honored house. Lee. Kick this motherfucking mule. A April lot of Mason. love. Where the fuck you been, April Oh, Mason? I've been traveling. I've been on the road down. since 2006. My face has been on the road every weekend, almost. I always knew that you did a lot of the troops and all that stuff. Yeah, I've de- I've been to 67 countries. Wow. Um, I- Iraq, Saudi, Kuwait, Djibouti. Uh, I've been to Korea four times. Almost got beat up by by a store owner who accused me of being too fat to fit his garments. And then Ida, <laughs> Ida had to step in and save me from this Korean man who wanted to beat me down in his store. Jesus. Did you go with Steve Simone? Because I know he did a lot of those tours. No, around. I've always done like lady tours. A lot of lady tours. And you really like him. Like I, really, I do. I've, I've been, seen pictures of you shooting guns. And, I, I didn't hit anything. I was like, oh, what did I hit? And the guy was like, nothing, ma'am. You didn't, you didn't hit a thing. I'll so. never forget, like, when I first met you, and, you know, I mean, you're still very beautiful. And I remember bumping into you and uh, another friend of mine. And you're like, yeah, we're going over there to do tours. And I'm like, oh, I just feel so bad for these soldiers. Oh, I, like, I brought my tits over. They were happy. That. I like, Mace is gonna go to, she's a backbreaker. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> Those soldiers are going to go fucking AWOL. It's like that one fucking soldier in Apocalypse Now when the, when they landed. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And they threw them off the helicopter. Oh. Those are guys when you leave. I'm coming with you. Then. Oh, I would have brought a few back. No, I know. There are a few like, handsome you fellas. Going, you, you kept going. I'm like, she must be going over there. Just torturing these I, Well, I, I never banged one. I never banged one. But there was one in a commissary where I was like, oh, yeah. That's the one I'd sit on his face. That's the, <laughs> that's the one. Are you allowed? Do they tell you not to? I, I mean, you just don't. I don't. 
I don't know if any other ladies did, but I didn't want to like sneak off in a base in Iraq with my helmet, and my Kevlar vest, and just pound some stranger. Seemed like not appropriate. When you do these things, are you scared at all? Anything? I was only scared in Saudi. Because, like when you do Iraq, you're on U.S. military bases and installations, and they do all the clearance, and you're flying in Blackhawks, and there's like Whoa. dudes that are, you know, they have a bunch of guns on them. But when you go to Saudi, you're just like with this Korean dude who's your MWR rep taking you to downtown Riyadh. And then I came, some guy came up to me in downtown Riyadh, and he's like, you steal, I'll cut your hands off. And I was like, oh, you can just say that to a, a white-faced lady in Saudi. So I was a little scared. I was a little more scared because you're not on base and they can't have uniformed soldiers with you at all. So you're just whatever MWR rep you get. Jesus Christ. So you do yeah. clubs and then mix in. Um, I mean, I've traveled throughout. I've done like shows in Europe and Australia and Southeast Asia. And then every state here, I'm always peddling my dick jokes from town to town. Now you've been in every state all 52? <laughs> every, all, yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. All states. <laughs> 50? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 50. I think I'm missing a couple. <laughs> I'm missing Hawaii. You do all those. I've done them all. I've done them all. Montana. You've never done Hawaii? No. Okay. I did Hawaii, like. Hawaii, I've done New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma. I don't think I've been to Arkansas. Okay. Uh, done some weird shows in Little Rock. Mississippi, I did. Yeah. No, I did Little Rock. Yeah, so see, there you go. <laughs> I did Little Rock, the funny bone. I think you'd be surprised if you go through and you're like, oh, I think I probably have at some point in your life. I knew I was close years ago. Yeah. I knew there were just a couple of states missing. But now, because I even went to Alaska. Yeah. No, I did. Al Alaska was my last one. Choke some... Charlie. <laughs> Like a I, motherfucker. I did some weird theater, but I think like some El DeBarge cover band was in town and we got upstaged by some weird cover band that our show was a real stanker. It's a fun town, Alaska. <laughs> yeah. Now that you no. remind me, I gotta get a theater. It was beautiful. Somewhere. It is fucking beautiful. I want to do some dog sleds. And the fish is fucking delicious. Yeah. Right out of There was of, a place right across that grilled fish for you. It was still flapping. No <laughs> Japanese people. They were no. white. They were just cooking <laughs> big fat dudes. <laughs> ate fish all fucking day. Oh. But I remember that I went up there with a stripper. Okay. <laughs> I dated a stripper at the time. Yeah. This is 95 when I went to Alaska. 96, I opened up a Todd Jordan. He's still a dear friend of mine. And we stayed at the condo. But the big attraction was the strip club there. Okay. Because in 95, there was... Three women to every one man. Oh, wow. There was some statistic in those years, if you look it up. I think it might be the other way around. People were moving to Alaska because there was tons of pussy. Yeah. And nobody to fuck it. <laughs> and what happens is when the ships come in, yeah. those chicks make 20000 a night. Really? Yeah, when the fishing boats or the sailors or something. Just That was the reputation. So I dated a stripper. Yeah. And... Half the girls from Seattle at that time, we, we, we were living in Seattle myself, Josh Wolf, a couple of us yeah. were living up there. And she was saying that just how, if you live in Seattle, or in, I think up in, let's just keep it in the Pacific Northwest so I don't get it fucking, you could, if you're a young man and you're in shape, you get a job on a fishing. For a few months. For a few months. It's dangerous work, but people approach me. When I yeah. lived in Seattle, tons of work. You, Make you, your money and come back. Yeah, you go out for 30 days, you come back with, I don't know, 10 grand. I'm just drawing a number yeah. out there. Something that you would not make if you worked two jobs here. Yeah. You just went for 60 days and you come Got back. Got cash. And then people would just get addicted. They, it's, yeah. you know, 60 days, $20,000. You work for 60 days. Yeah. You shit in a little room, you smell feet, you just smell a bunch ass. Of dudes. But you sacrifice. You almost, you know, if you watch that show, what's that? The um, King Crab Fisherman, King Crab the Deadliest no Catch. Deadliest Catch, mm -hmm. yeah. That was an option for men. For the strippers in Seattle. Just wait it get, out. They would get flown up to Alaska. The club would come to Seattle and go, give me the 10 hottest bitches because they want when the ships come in, whoever it, whoever, whatever it was, whether it was the big fishing boats or the service, I don't know what it is, so yeah. don't quote me. They wanted the chicks to be ready up yeah, there. Yeah, you're all horned up if you've been on a boat with dudes with catching dudes. fish all day. And they have cash. Yeah. And there was like three. The strip club was like a downstairs, but it looked like an old hooker house. Like they would have VIP rooms, and then they would stand outside. And 
it was a pretty neat place. And yeah. I don't even like strip like an old brothel. I'm not, I'm not a strip club guy. Yeah, <laughs> it was like an old brothel style. But that, that's all I remember from fucking Alaska. The, the Joku <laughs> Charlie's just dying. I just got some boots. That's all I remember. There were That's no it? titties. Just I bought a pair of boots, no. some winter boots. So, like, as people who have been doing it a while, for a new comic, do you guys wish you had spent more time traveling in all these places? Because not many people get to go to every 50 state. Like, that's, like, a weird thing that comics get to do, and it doesn't seem that weird, but, like... Do you wish you had ex- experienced more of these places or do you just... No, I feel like when I... I mean, it's if it's a good city, if I'm going to some shithole, you're like, oh, I'm just going to hide out in my courtyard Marriott and eat snacks off my tits all day. But I feel like if you're in a good city, you always go and... Because most people want to show you around, if, especially if you're going to a comedy club or you're doing a military thing, you're like climbing on planes or they're having you run with the dar the dogs that drug dogs that bite people like i feel like you're always involved in some shenanigans on the road i don't feel i feel like i've done a ton of shit okay i don't think i've laid down enough in the last 17 years i really like you yeah and i know that when you travel you really enjoy yourself no but you yourself <laughs> have met other people that you know they travel so that they seem interesting yeah those I just, motherfuckers i don't like i just like travel i like to travel but I don't. I'm scared of international travel, just on a personal level. Are you? Don't trust it. I don't, <laughs> oh, really? Don't try. I went to Jamaica. I saw the chickens. I wouldn't eat food. Okay. I starved myself in those countries. I don't like. Is there anywhere like that you would want to go? I love to go to England. Okay. Really? I love to see like Birmingham, England. England. I love to see like the studios oh, okay. where they recorded Pink Floyd albums and okay. Led Zeppelin and all that stuff. I love to go to the motherland, Ireland. Okay. I love to go to Israel and go to the wall and pray and meet some hard hitting Jews <laughs> okay. that don't fuck around. Um, oh, let me plan a trip for you to Ireland and the UK. I think I'd like, like to go. I got no passport. Remember, I got 89 felonies. So that's the <laughs> so they I'm, won't... I'm like your husband. <laughs> all right, all right. For me to travel, yeah. I could travel. Yeah. Okay. But it's going to cost me and a year of courts and downtown and paperwork. Okay. And at the end of the week, how much do I really want to travel? Not, not that you know, much. When people travel, the first thing I say to them is, how is the food? You know? Well, I England's I not. England's kind of shitty. I don't trust shitty. I don't trust, not, I don't trust people over here. Can you imagine me in another fucking country? That's how I lose I weight. Just, just gobble take me to another country. I'll gobble anything. I'll, you give me a food cart. You give me a man with dirty hands. I'll eat whatever. You know, like I, I never where, get sick. I see where Anthony Bourdain used to go and the yeah. chubby little gay dude. Yeah. <laughs> that each creepy shit. Yeah. You know that shit drives me crazy. I walk down the street, I see a chicken's leg. You're and not gonna do it. Dipping it in barbecue sauce. I'm on a plane. Yeah. I'm done. I'll I just, try it. I get creeped out by all that stuff, but. I will tell you my personal opinion on something, and whether you agree with me or not. I love the United States of America. And when I became a comic, the thought of going to some places, Mm -hmm. always like you have these predisposition, like, oh, I saw this on TV, Alabama, they hate Mm -hmm. black people, and you can't be out after midnight, whatever you may think. And today, one of the things that makes me the happiest about being a comic is that before I could look you in the face and go, mm-hmm. oh my God, con last year. What, what, where are all these jerk off from Hollywood? Go to Ibiza, <laughs> Ibiza, whatever the fuck these fucking yeah. mooks go to. Uh... Before you're allowed to go to Ibiza, I want you to go to North Dakota. Okay. I want you to go to South Dakota. I've been. <laughs> you, you see Bismarck? what I'm saying to you? Yeah, yeah. I want you to go to. You know, like northern Min- northern Minnesota, where people off go fishing and offer you that holic- holic- that fish that they have that's yeah. special, but then they're mad at no uh, what's what Wisconsin yeah. has a fish, and they'll tell you, you know, Not I went to good. all those places, and I had the best times in my life. There was no cocaine involved. Later on that night, <laughs> I'm sure I hooked up with the bartender or something. But one of the things that makes me proudest about being a comic is that I could look you in the eye and tell you this is a fucking beautiful country and the people that live in it. Like, I went to Texas a couple weeks ago. And Texas people, motherfucking Texas people. Texas then barbecue. Go, then you go to Pittsburgh and 
they, they got a certain flavor. Yeah. Then you go to Chicago, and Chicago people are alive, Jack. Yeah. Like, you know, they're alive. And then you go to San Francisco, and everybody's kind of weird and hippie-ish. Uh -huh. So every place has this identity. Um, so the country's gorgeous. Like, yeah. I've cop coke in South <laughs> Snake River, South Dakota. <laughs> The one Mexican dishwasher. We yeah. made eye contact and it was all over. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know how strangers fall in love in the night? I knew he was a drug dealer when we made contact. <laughs> he was the only Mexican at the South Dakota. We made eye contact. When he came by, I said, Como esta? And he was all excited. You're Latino. He took me to his house for dinner. He was the only Spanish guy in like a 12 mile region. He got stuck up there because his, his wife was in the army. Okay. So he moved from like New York and he saw me, invited me to his house, got me weed, got me coke, amphetamines. I mean, and I still, you know, and it's a fucking weird story, but it just goes to show you. People, everybody's great around them. People, I feel like people everybody great. has the same set of wants and needs and set of emotions, and you yeah. want to feel loved and accepted no matter where you go. But that's how I feel about other countries, other other than the language so barrier. Do they hate us in France? No, I mean, France is a little snooty. Like, I was in Paris one time, and I asked how far the walk was to the Eiffel Tower, and the woman that... She was, a, it was like an expensive hotel. I'm like, bitch, just answer the question. She was like, I, I do not know. I did not know how fast you walk. And I was like, ah, what about this? Like a medium pace. How long do you think it'll take me at a medium pace, you dumb coos? Like, <coughs> I feel like France is a little snotty, but most places, like Mediterranean's very warm. Italians are very warm. The Swiss are nice people. Like, I feel like Malaysia was lovely. I had a lovely Uber driver in Malaysia. I feel like you have conversations with these people and everybody wants to see their kids do well and wants love and wants a better life for when their you went, family. Now, in Italy, are, are the men handsy? They're a little grabby. I they're heard little, they're grabby. They're real grabby. My they're, friend went, he goes, oh, no, they're good. They're little. Be, and he's Italian. Yeah. He was like, we should be motherfuckers. They touch your wife. They always... What? They're you know, more aggressive. Yeah. And I find because we I own a bar in Florence, Italy with my husband. Do and you? ours is like the non rapey bar apparently. <laughs> There's like a few rapey bars where Italian, like older Italian dudes just kinda lurk outside and wait for the college students to like come, you know, stumbling out, oh find out who's the weak one. Wait for it. <laughs> yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. I didn't know you owned the bar in Italy. Yeah, we bought a bar and restaurant. In Florence. Do you do comedy there? No. You no. Just, you're like Audie Bucco's wife? You I just hostess? sit. I just sit and drink. I drink a lot more. And, what kind of and, food? Uh, American fair. Because there's like 15,000 American students. The Get Lucky Bar and Restaurant in Florence. <laughs> it's just an American bar. You don't have hummus on the menu? Do no, we don't. Thanks. No, we you, have you, uh, you, fried macaroni and cheese balls. That's why I love you. Potato Your Polish skins. roots always yeah. stayed with you. You always had <laughs> some type of pride. Fucking Polish people are tough. You never seen like the the organization of Polish concerned citizens. No, no. Lobbying they... outside like a Barnes and Nobles because they sell Polish joke books. No, they yeah, they're that? they're just taking a hockey stick to there's the head a, a lot. And... There's a hundred Polish joke books. Nobody gives a shit. And not one Polish person has ever raised their hand. No. But black people want reparations. You know what I'm Everybody wants something. It's a little different in joke books and slavery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then life, how to change a light bulb jokes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, still the same. They profited off fucking. That's true. You know, fucking still the same. Every fucking race has suffered. And we're all. I feel like all Polish. A lot of, lot of, lot of alcoholism in Polish families. I feel like I'm just riddled, just chock full of alcoholics in our family. Strong Polish stock. It's crazy because my ex-wife was Polish yeah. and I was around their family for six years. And they really rubbed off on me. They were very influential yeah. in who I am today. The father was self-made. I think he went into the army first and he didn't like how he was treated uh, because he was Polish. Mm -hmm. It was like the 40s or 50s and he got out and got a job at Fisher Price or something and then he went to college. He went to the University of Buffalo because he was so ashamed of how Polish people were treated. Hmm. They used to call him Dumpayash, which means dumbass or donkey or something like that. Hmm. And so it, you could tell he always went for intelligence. Like yeah. I met him right before I went to prison mm -hmm. and he didn't fucking like me. Before yeah. I got in trouble, he wouldn't pay attention to me, but I would always read 
these magazines that he had, these Air Force magazines, and he would go take them with you. They were great. They were great articles. Yeah. So we became kind of tight because I read mm -hmm. because of his love. But I got to really meet him, and I understood what his whole motivation was. He didn't like how Polish people were portrayed. Yeah. And he wanted to change that, you know, and that's why we were laughing earlier that he changed his name. <laughs> But when we get together with the rest of the family, they would hate on that side of the family that changed their name because they kept the Krasinski name yeah. or the whatever. You know, Pat Benatar is a half a Polak. Really? You ever see I, her last I mean, name? I keep, mine's Maciejczyk. Yeah, it's, like they're fucking, these names are it's, huge. You it's know? a lot. It's a lot of... But I really respect Polish people because I got... I learned a lot from that family. They were first or second generation Polish or something. You know, I learned all the dishes. I learned the language. They brought, my ex-wife had, had two brothers that were world-class skiers, mm -hmm. but just didn't have, they were Polish. Yeah. They just didn't have the motivation to, they'd to, rather be on a roof and drink. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that sounds like most they of my They were blue-collar, but I learned something from yeah. them. One weekend, we all went skiing. Yeah. And I'm a no-frills type of guy. I don't, need, I don't like looking like something. Yeah. You ever go to a comedy show and the comic's got a suit on with sneakers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, you know, ooh, <laughs> you're so cutting edge. On a Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, I, I hate, I've always hated outfits. That's why I don't like the hats, with the goatee and the earring. I still got the same head that I had in high school. There's no markings. Yeah. You know, when I get arrested, they got nothing. They always look for that one scar, the knife mm. scar. There's nothing. I don't, I don't need for you to know who the fuck <laughs> I am. By putting two earrings in my eyeballs, you know what I'm saying? Do you remember that guy that it was a comic that used to bring his own microphone and he would unscrew and then put like an old timey microphone for essentially open mics? You're like, what is this guy fucking doing with his life? Do you remember that dude? I heard. I remember the story, yeah. but Who I can't is picture this the guy's bag name of dicks just that would bring, bring his, his own, own microphone. gold fucking microphone for a three minute spot. <laughs> but I remember my brother in laws took me. We weren't brother in laws yet. We were just, I was dating their sister. Mm -hmm. And I went to Breckenridge with them one day. It was like a two hour drive from Boulder or something, I think. I don't know. And we went to this tournament. When we got there, all these people had on, I swear to God, it was beautiful. They had on suits and the expensive goggles and the fucking retard helmets. <laughs> and it was 1987. <laughs> it's 1986. Nobody yeah. gave a fuck about a bump to the head then. Everybody was getting hit on the head now. Oh, you're going to have, uh, you know, the next day. I can't remember. I can't take it no more. Uh, you know, for 2,000 years, they've been playing football. All of a sudden now, I hear people. I'm going to shoot somebody. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what the fuck they're saying? And I'll never forget that it was like, I don't know. I could be exaggerating. Let's say 25 people in this competition and they all had the expensive gear and sponsored by whoever <laughs> my brother-in-law's basically took their sneakers off <laughs> you know roof of jeans <laughs> a t-shirt and a fucking flannel oh. they put goggles on no no retard helmet nothing yeah. just they headed right the, down joe was his yeah. name and in polish is juju yeah if your name is joe juju or something yeah. like that so he went up there broke the record they gave him a trophy. He threw the skis in the back, and he got in his truck. And drove and we off. drove away. Yeah. And he used to drive with a bong. In 1986, he already had a bong in the car, and he would bring a gallon of water. <laughs> and he would fill it with the with do bongs. He was heavy. My brother-in-law, uh, Joe, I still think about him. Uh, I still think about him. But all those little things, their work ethic, yeah. they drank all night. That's I, that's most of my family. Like my that dad, ethic, my dad still works. I love all 60, that shit. Sixty four and like yeah, you know, I love he all that shit. Stayed with my mom even though she yelled at him every day. He was like, I just couldn't imagine waking up one day without my sons. You're like, all right, that's that's admirable. I get it. Just working, just still churning away. I don't give a fuck if you're an alcoholic as long as you're a functioning alcoholic. If you're a functioning alcoholic, you have no beef with me. Uh, my mom's, my dad doesn't really drink anymore because of the diabetes. But my my mom's a real real boozer, real Ario booze wagon. Just always starts at ten. You hear the cheap beer. Ten in the morning. Ten in the morning. You hear it crack open. How old? 
64, but her mom died of cirrhosis of the liver. So yeah, I feel so like it's, it's that's, hereditary. Yeah, yeah, they're all real boozy. I can't believe I didn't come out boozy. Real? Nah, I'm not a real boozer. My mom could put them away, Jack. Yeah. From dusk to dawn. Yeah, that's mine. Like a ca- like a case every two days, my every mom, day and a half. My mom was breakfast was a can of tomato juice with a Heineken beer. Yeah. How the fuck do you exist? Yeah, that's my mom. My mom just you hear it crack. I'll be sleeping on the couch and like, oh shit, there it goes. It's starting early. I I. I Everyone I, has their thing, though. I think. Everybody does have their thing. It's just uh, knowing it, seeing if it becomes a problem. I prefer weed. I Listen, weed has never been a problem to nobody. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you go over the fucking top with it and you fall asleep at work or, you know, it affects drug tests. I, I don't even, I've never even considered weed. To be anything. Like, like anything. Like yeah. since I was a kid, like I, my godfather smoked it. Yeah. And nothing happened to him. He would giggle. So <laughs> wait a second. You're telling me that something that makes you giggle yeah. is bad? He would giggle. He I would... Just, yeah, I just ordered a, a McFlurry, a $10 Uber Eats McFlurry. That's the, my only guilty thing. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm just oh, paying for overpriced yeah. McDonald's I mean, deliveries. You know, right now, I would love, especially after my long drug career, I would love to look people in the eye and say that I'm sober. But I, I had a hard time when I was sober. Yeah. It really went against who I was for some reason. It just bothered me. Yeah. I did it for a month here, a month there when I got locked up. I did it and I could do it. It just didn't feel like me. So right now I go, you know what? I don't need pills. Yeah. I don't need this. I don't need that. I like my reefer. Yeah, me too. To me right now, listen, I did like eight bong hits before I got in here. Do I look like I did eight <laughs> no. bong hits? It really doesn't do nothing to me no more. It's a teddy bear. Yeah. It's the last piece of my my past. I just can't drive. I feel like I, I just get real weird and paranoid. Uh, me too. So, so yeah. don't drive. I try to avoid it as much as anybody can. <laughs> I should have Ubered so? here. Who, uh, what's the weed like in Italy? It's not as good. It's Is, shitty and they roll it with tobacco, which always makes me furious. I'm like, why do I need just fucked up. Yeah, the tobacco. But those Egyptians, they roll the weed with the tobacco, tobacco. and they put pieces of hash in it. You yeah. go, you're night night <laughs> with no filter. You're going night night. Your lungs burn, but it makes you tough. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel like a, I already feel like a real strong, sturdy yeah, broad. You're but, fucking yeah. tough. <laughs> and you never stop. You're a, I, you have a lot of respect. You know, nothing pisses me off more. I'm married. I'm 56. I'm a don't. I wouldn't listen. I don't even want my wife to suck my dick. So when I say this, I say this out of pure. Honesty and respect. Nothing bothered me more was when that dude said that women aren't funny. Oh. When people make that statement, you know, because we're all hypocrites when we say that, because we all grew up on I Love Lucy. Yeah. So right there, you lost. Shut up. Don't make that statement. I just don't. Do have... not ever make that statement around me. I feel like you can. Somebody cannot be your sensibility, but if people make like, I never understand how people can hate comics. I'm like, how do you hate a person whose sole intention is so good and all they want to do is bring joy and happiness to strangers and sacrifice their life traveling around the world? And to say a woman's not funny, it's like, well, she, uh, she's making. She's making people laugh or her somebody wrote her a check. Her tax returns are an indication that that person's funny. I feel like if you're making money, you're making people laugh. So how can you fucking say that? No, it drives me crazy. And it's women like you that have always, I go, look at this bitch, you know. <laughs> just, wow, these bitches are complaining uh, that I don't get spots because I'm female. I'm this just going back out there. This bitch in Croatia. Yeah. Surrounded doing, by soldiers that are dying of fucking torment. Yeah, I'm doing weird shows yeah, in Slovenia. I'm just doing know, shows wherever I can. That's the and proof in the pudding to me. And there's two differences. You're in, I don't like to say this, but it's the truth. You're in the hot category. Yeah. So oh, you, you were handled. I'll take it. You can yeah. say it again if you, you want. You were handled. Well, you won like the sexy comic. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, that Howard Stern. Playboy, and I know you hosted the AVNs. AVN, so, you know. So you were handled differently. Mm-hmm. So you and I both know, you know, we all, you know the deal. You came into the club, you're great, we want to help you. Yeah. A week later, we're calling you for a piece of ass, you don't give them a piece of ass. <laughs> then no more now help. Now they don't book you and there's that- no more help. What a sad fucking state of affair of a human being you are. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, but that happens so much to women. No, and you, that's, and you that's can't, the as bottom a woman, line with it. bring another. Like, I find the trouble now is, like, if I want to bring a friend with me, another lady comic, they're like, wow, we can't have two ladies on a show. That's a lady show. And you're like, oh, I just have to be alone in a hotel room. There's only a few clubs where you're allowed to bring your opener as a woman if you want another woman. So you're just lonely. Like, how can you say a woman's not funny who's willing to be lonely for 17 years? Like, I was on the road. There were years it was like 40, 42 weekends a year. I know. I remember like, that. Like, just you were churning it out gone. every, just coming back on Monday, flying back out Tuesday night. Just t- enough the time to days. just enough time to do laundry and repack with the, where they still could smoke Feed for three. Sh- yeah. Three shows. <laughs> three show Saturdays. Three show fucking Saturdays. Ooh, there's only three places that do that now. Really? Yeah, uh, Tampa does it. Punchline in Atlanta does it, and St. Louis Funny Bone and oh, and Zanies does it. St. Louis just stopped. Zanies. I won't do a midnight show. Oh, Miami's doing it. It's hard. It's Miami and Prob is doing it. I they, they called three weeks ago. It's it's. Not, I said thank you, but no, it's only an hour and a half. Listen, no, it's when you've it talked off. for that long. Knock it off. That third show on every is, level. Oof. On every level. I don't want the consumer to put up with that. Yeah. I don't want the consumer to put up with that. Again, we're going back to the law of diminishing returns. How good is Joey going to be for the third show? Not nah, it's you're tired. How long is Joey going to be? Not only is he tired, you're tired. Yeah. You're ten sheets into the wind because you started partying on fucking. I went to Guns and Roses <laughs> uh, Saturday night. We were, my wife and I were talking about this, and I want to clarify this on the podcast. I was not trying to be an asshole, but this is reality. This was a girl at the Guns N' Roses concert the other night. It just started. Oh, concert just done. started. Concert just fucking started. She's passed out. And done. this poor bitch is passed out on the couch Snooze next to them. me, okay? I took two pictures of her, and people got pissed off at me. Go <laughs> help her, whatever. First off, it's none of my business. Number two. She had a boyfriend. Yeah, let him. She came monitor. with a boyfriend. What happened was two things happened, and I'll explain to you what happened because I've been to a thousand fucking concerts. A, either you started getting high too early, mm-hmm. or B, you know what happens when you go to a concert? Your adrenaline goes up. Yeah. When you walk into like a concert that you're a fan of, your adrenaline goes up, and after three songs, your adrenaline crashes. She was passed out. I mean, this is Guns N' Roses, the Palladium. It can't be any louder. It's not like she was playing the fucking organ with the guy with a harmonica. <laughs> this bitch was out. And she passed out with her boyfriend. And the boyfriend got up and went to another section with other people and left her there. <gasps> and I didn't include that in the tweet because I'm not a crime stopper. Yeah, yeah, but people she, like, she could get a rogue finger people, blasting people, on the way. You don't no, know what's going to happen. Listen, and it, it, you got to be prepared as a woman today. Yeah. With all this shit that you read about, bitch, it's like getting a DUI today. If you yeah. come to me and say DUI, I got to stop talking to you for 90 days. Yeah. You're on 90 day personal suspension yeah. from Uncle Joey <laughs> because I got everything available to you. You can get an Uber. You, you can get, get worst home, case, scenario, to get a lift friend. and get raped. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Lift is like the bottom of the fucking tier. Lift will give you a ride for three dollars. You might have to blow the guy, or <laughs> you might blow him and not know it till the morning. Till you, you wake uh, up on a fucking crunchy. yeah, you wake up somewhere, but there's no option to have a DUI anymore. Yeah. Not in today's society. We have too many options for you now to get a DUI. If you tell a bar that you're hammered, they'll figure it out. They'll to get figure it out. out. You know, to get you so, home. somebody will get you home. Yes. We do that at our bar. We get people. Yes, drunk no, no. lady across there, the street home. That, they can't. They can't continue. So I don't even know what the fuck we're talking about. Talking about that drunk lady passed out. Oh yeah, she and, was yeah, passed yeah. out. And then her boyfriend. And I felt bad. I have, a, I have a daughter. I felt horrible looking at her, but I'm going to prepare my daughter never to let her guard down and, and pride. And never get. That's no. what happens. I did that I, in college at a fraternity party, and I asked this guy. I was like, "Hey, do you know where I can lay down?" And then he gave me a room, but he's like, make sure you lock the door behind me. And then it was like, turns out he was a nice guy. Like, I'm the one chick in college that found the one really nice guy that must have had a ton of sisters. And he was like, don't ever fucking do that again. Don't drink stuff out of the garbage can at a fraternity house. The whatever punch they're making. Yeah, yeah, whatever punch they're making. And never ask somebody if you can lay down or you're going to have just a pile of gang rape. We live in some weird fucking Mm -hmm. times now. It's so weird that... 
you could just say something, go through the media, and you're done. And you don't even have to get arrested or nothing. There's no. no proof presented. You know, I just remember this. When I lived in Colorado in 83, I worked with a guy at Sport Kalen. He was a general manager there. His, I had extra cash because I was robbing drug dealers. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't hide the cash in the house in case somebody broke in. And one year his father died and he didn't have, it's a true story, he didn't have the money to go home. So I said, take the money, you know, we'll figure it out. And we always, he was always nice to me, he came back and he did pay me back. But about three months later, he was a line judge at mm -hmm. ski events, but he really couldn't tell Sport Kalen, the company, because it was a conflict of interest. Not that they were doing anything wrong. He just felt it was nobody's business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some people just don't need to know all your business. So he would take off vacations, like March 21st through the 29th, and go to, I don't know, Summit yeah. Mountain and judge races or whatever. And he went to a bar on a Monday on a Tuesday, if I'm saying this correctly, and he started talking to a woman, and they started getting a little cozy, blah, 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 blah. But a girl that he had slept with before came in, and he excused himself. Everybody was surrounded, and he went with that girl, left and went home with her, boom. <laughs> the next day, he woke up and went to the ski thing. That night, that girl that he had been talking to that he left at the bar the next morning she went to the cops and said that she had been raped by that guy what that he had busted into the hotel room and raped her that night so when they went to sport Kalen to look for him they couldn't find him and it even looked more suspicious they like he took a vacation where is he he didn't say Wow. So the cops knocked on my door, and they're like, how well do you know? And I go, he's my neighbor. We talk. I mean, he's in I go, what is this concern? And they go, well, he's in charge of something. I go, whatever it is, I'm not uh, whatever, but he ain't the type of guy that. Yeah, it's breaking he, doors. He, I didn't know about rape. Yeah. I didn't know about the rape. I didn't know. So I guess she positively identified him from, because they had no mugshot on them. He had never been arrested. The guy never had a crossing ticket. She identified him from the what? store, like employee of the month type pictures, yeah. whatever they do. And <clears throat> cops were looking for him. And then one day I, I went outside and there he was unloading his car. And I go, get in the fucking house. Go, cops are looking for you for a rape. He's like, what are you talking about? I go, did you meet some chick? And they told me the whole story. And then he turned himself in. They got him arrested. This chick swore up and down in the Bible how it was done. The lock, uh, he had a mask on, a ski mask, so they raided his house, they didn't find the mask. They did a whole write-up in the fucking paper about it. About uh, him? Did uh, they use his name for? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, my God, they buried him. Sport Cam didn't know what to do. Me, I'm like, this guy might smoke pot once in a while, whatever, but he ain't no fucking tree jumper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He ain't gonna break <laughs> You're not smoking pot and then climbing no, and fucking breaking into houses. In that, no, it was too not... small of a community. And, you know, they kept, and then they, the people were like, what are you talking about? He had 800 witnesses. He was at a thing, a ski summit for four days or whatever it was. Yeah. This is 1983, guys. When he came back, they pressed charges on him, rape. She was from Texas. They flew her back. She identified him and the whole thing, and then he pulled the ace out of the card. And he was like, this is where I was this night, this is where I was the night before with this girl. And the chick said, no, I want to press charges. He's the one that raped me. It was something wild. And he ended up going to court, and the witnesses, and it got dismissed, but then there was a civil, and he ended up suing her. For, like, defamation? Her owned something big in Texas. For yeah. For defamation and then before they cut the check she came clean and said that she had flown her boyfriend from texas and didn't want the parents to know so the maid had seen him going into the room just fucking people make up that's insane it was fucking crazy that's insane i don't know how we got to the story yeah, yeah. Start smoking reef. oh <laughs> I think it's all started with that woman passed out. Yeah, yeah with the yeah, woman yeah. being passed out. So it just, 
I, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't take the picture. I took the picture because I thought it was funny that she's all she was all fucked up at the show, and it was the second song, and she's gonna wake up on Sunday. I didn't know that was the second song. Jesus, second song. When you, it was late when you posted that. I figured it was the end of the concert. Oh Ten thirty. No, I kept posting the pictures. <laughs> Showing them Guns N' Roses, and I would go, she's still out. Uh, Guns N' Roses, a picture of us, she's still out. And then she, and at one point, she was this way on the couch with her head back, and then... Did the boyfriend ever come back? He came back like an hour later. All right. And he picked her up, and she was like all fucked up. And then he just held her and made believe he loved her. <laughs> like he, he had just, been there the whole night. Yeah, like he had night. been there the whole night. What a night. good guy. What, but I wasn't posting pictures being fucking perverted. Or no, I was with my wife. Yeah. I mean. But so I have a, a friend who, like, we're both open micers, but she is on the road a lot and she'll like sleep in her car. And she got mad at me once because I was like, "Be careful!" Like, it made, it made like it made me nervous to think about a, a friend <laughs> of mine sleeping in her car at, like a rest stop. And yeah, she's like, "You wouldn't say that to a guy." And I'm like, "Yeah, because you, know you don't probably... have any upper body strength as a woman." Okay, so was so, it like as a woman comic? A female comic on the road. Did you ever run into anything weird? Or were you, did oh you my were... god! What do you mean? Shit, All the fucking time, every fucking go- <laughs> every goddamn. She I think even one... from club owners, like the one oh, guy in Kansas City. Oh, oh, did... the wig. The Craig, the wig, Craig yeah, Glazier the wig. died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to be like, "All right, when are you gonna let me pop you in the asshole?" Like you just have to deal with that shit for all week, Jesus. for ten years. You He's... have no idea what these women. So much. So like when I bring I, one, when I bring you guys, when I bring you guys, when I bring women on the podcast, it's because I love you, and it's basically out of respect because nobody has a fucking clue. Women have a clue. Yeah. Women know what workplace harassment is, and trust me, I'm not sitting it's here constant. being an angel. I've harassed yeah. tons of women. <laughs> yeah. Because when I want a blowjob, I want a blowjob uh, now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna sit here and be Joe Angel. But as a comic, you know, listen, any fucking industry where a woman starts at the low end of the totem pole, there's always an asshole. There's so many. There's always an asshole, you know, flexing his muscles to this poor woman. I'm I'm sure I've done it when I was younger. But then you get sisters and you have daughters and you meet women. I mean, comic chicks are the coolest motherfuckers if you like I think if I like yeah, if I'm like if you fought the battle, like you'd you'd be fighting every fucking day. So eventually you just learn to grow kind of a thick skin and just ah, this is what it is. You never I mean, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna battle dead Craig Glazier and did Stanford and something. He did die. He died. He died <laughs> and I'm sad because he owed me money. Rest and then, in peace. Another creepy yeah, motherfucker. He was super creepy, but I feel like he had a magic shell heart. Like he was one of those guys that I do believe the in his parents, like for to have three drug addict sons and hey, that dad must have been such a fucking asshole. Like I always had a soft spot in my heart for him because I was like he was just a fucked up dude who wanted love and some I didn't attention. Know he died. Now I all, feel bad. all of them are gone. All all three of those brothers. He died right before my wedding, and I cried because he had owed me money. And if I had known he was dying, he died of cancer. I wouldn't have asked him for my money back. And that was the one with the wig. Yeah. There's a lot of them with the wigs, but he was one of them. He with was a, the, he was he the cocaine really, problem. Yeah, really bad. <laughs> the king I of mean, stink. The king. the king of stink. <laughs> the wig would stink. Oh. The sweat would come out from under the wig. Oh. That club, you know. Listen, I do comedy every weekend. Not every weekend. I do comedy like every other weekend on the road, and it's very easy for me to take Lee or whatever, mm-hmm. but I won't. I refuse because I want him to see the beauty of stand-up. Mm-hmm. There's a whole thing. It's not just about getting on stage. If you think it's just about writing jokes and getting on stage, quit now. <laughs> There's a whole culture. Of the journey of getting better. The like- journey of getting better, the journey of meeting people, the journey of understanding female comics mm-hmm. and how they work with you. You can work with them and you can work against them. It could be a bad fucking week. You know, I love women opening for me. You know why? Because a lot of girlfriends buy their boyfriends tickets for me. And then they sit through another idiot in front of me mm-hmm. cursing. I like to bring a woman so they have something. Yeah. So, you know what? I don't really like Joey. 
<laughs> but at least I got a broad that's drawing heat up to that. Women are always, I think, the social planners they, for most couples. Are, like my husband are. isn't a planner. He, no, an, he just shows, shows up shit. and he puts on his pants and he kind of goes where he's told. But going back to that journey, that journey is so important. Mm -hmm. And when I see a comic in L.A. and he thinks he's had it, and I know he didn't have that journey that we had, I know he's going to have to pay for it somewhere along the line. Because those are the shows you learn those the most the from, the most. like bowling alleys, this and sucks. get to the get this to the sucks. laundromat this and drive. Gonna, this sucks. This is for one out of every fifteen that you get really good here. But that journey, that journey is the one that you cannot. Those vivid, those Driving. nights are the. You know what it is to fucking take a bus. Yeah. From to, from North Carolina to Buffalo, and every city you stop and you have to go out and sneak to it. So you join. <laughs> And get back on get back on the bus and <laughs> eat at a bus stop. That stuff comes back later on. That's what I, I look at some of the things I was willing to do. Like I remember driving. I had a show in Ptolemy, California. It was like seven and a half, eight hour drive. Did my show at this Indian casino for whatever little money I was getting. Drove back to the airport to fly to Albuquerque. Didn't know that Roswell was four and a half hours from Albuquerque. And then cried at the rental car place because I was so fucking tired. And they weren't going to rent me a car because they thought I was unstable. And then I had to convince them that I had a comedy show that I had to get to. And then they rented me a car. And I just remember power, a lot of powering through just to like drive and get it done and go and pick up your 150 200 bucks when you first start and it's all you had i feel it now when i go on stage in the main room and i'm rocking and rolling yeah. up there i go back i could say wow i'm happy i did that yeah. work i'm happy i did those mormon rooms in utah yeah. for tribble's partner you know it's such a beautiful journey life is a journey well you that's, don't base it on one thing, you know. That's what I like about European shows now. It's like I'll do these weird shows in like Rijeka, you know, Croatia or Slovenia. And I feel like I'm new again because you have to find that language barrier as to what hits with another culture. And I'm like, I haven't felt that sense of new where you're like, oh, this is a bar room. I'm doing these weird bar shows in Croatia. And you're just not as good as you remember being in the States because you, there's they just don't understand what the fuck you're saying half the time. So you have to kind of figure out comedy in a new way. Are you doing 50-50 now? Like, is it 50-50 for your tour or are you doing 60 -40? I'm still touring more than I'm spending time with my husband. So, But are uh, you doing, I'm talking about percentages of state to out of the country tour. um no mostly here like i'll come back i came back for three weeks i'll go back for a week to see my husband i'll come back for two weeks i'll go back for two weeks to see my husband i'll come back for three weeks on the road i'll go back just back and forth between italy and mostly shows on the road like i'm hardly in la just every once a month maybe like three days to whatever meetings and things i have to catch up with check my mail <laughs> How is your experience with Netflix? It's been really good. When did you I, shoot those? Uh, we shot it in March, and then it aired August 13th. Where so, did you shoot it at? Uh, here at, in Los Angeles. That's cool as yeah. shit. And yeah. you've known she, Tiffany since the beginning years. of the time. Yeah, she was in my wedding. Yeah. No shit. In Greece. How long ago? Uh, one year ago. We okay. got married September 2nd. So she could afford the Greek Yeah, ticket. yeah, this yeah. Everybody, the... We had a good turnout for Greece. 58 people for an From internet. Here? for Yeah. Some of his friends. His friends are a little shittier than mine. I feel like I got better friends. But his friend, your friends came out? Yeah, I had Who a lot of friends. Um, I had 14 bridesmaids. Um, from, from Pennsylvania? From Pennsylvania. Okay. I had a few of my teacher, elementary school teacher friends. I feel like I had friends from every chapter of my life Could my college you. friends friends i first met when i came out here comedy friends so i love you to death you send me oh. an invite to your wedding yeah. i'm coming yeah <laughs> but <laughs> over right. the pond you can suck my dick oh. you get married at the vfw like the rest of you the come fucking, to italy we'll like show the rest you around of the cute girls in pittsburgh do you know what i'm saying yeah. everybody in pennsylvania gets married to vfw the fire, some fire all hell. of a sudden you want to get married in greece go fuck yourself. He, my husband can't get into the country <laughs> no, with his teasing. filthy iranian passport but I, I love it i love it that you you do all these adventurous things your life is really has been a fucking adventure I no mean. i forget sometimes how cool it is I, I feel like my shitty childhood afforded me a really good adult life 
Like, you know, as a female comic, I think when people also get mad at female comics, I'm like, you don't realize what it took to become a female comic. Like, both my grandparents died of AIDS. My aunt shot herself in the face. Like, you don't become a lady comic if you've had a whole bag of normal. Like, you, you grew up with homemade pudding and hugs. You know, you had to take a few a few beatings to become a lady comic. And then you get more of them when you come here. Oh, so many. And I've He's... seen, I, I, listen, I've seen a lot of men come and go. Mm-hmm. But I've seen a lot of women come and go, and it's this just does something to you. And some of the women don't realize, like you're, I don't know, what are you, 29 now? Yeah. <laughs> your ovaries, yeah. Your ovaries have Oh, I got like 17 eggs left. Yeah, I your, got, your ovaries <laughs> haven't asked for sperm milk yet to produce. Because <laughs> yeah. a lot of women, I mean, it's just one day at 33, they've been doing comedy for 10 and years. And they're done. Rocking and rolling. The ovary, when the ovaries call, the ovaries call. Yeah. You know, when when nature calls, nature calls. No, and I'm not. And a lot of women have bounced back from it. Now, mm. what do we have? We have four, five chicks that have shot specials, pregnant. Yeah. You know. No, I Kira. want one kid. I, yeah. I want a dollhouse, and it feels unstable as a woman to have a dollhouse if you don't have a kid. You can't just be an adult woman with a dollhouse. You need you need that baby. Hey, I had one at fifty. You did. And she was forty-four. Yeah. All right. All right. I still knocked her up at 44, uh-huh. and we weren't planning it. All right. You know, they were talking about it this morning at the gym. They're like, you know, you did it the right way. And I'm like, I didn't do anything the right way. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever controls this motherfucking world did that. I yeah. didn't know. After 12 years, after two years, if I don't get you pregnant, I'm, it's loads of hoy. Yeah. I'm just shooting loads in you till fucking <laughs> the midget falls out, right or wrong. You shoot half of it in her, and then the other half in the toilet when you pee. You close it, you shut the toilet, turn off yeah. the light, you come back three days, there's a little sea monkey. There's like a little hand swimming by out. himself. Yeah. <laughs> Coming to visit. How do you save half of it? Because you shot the other half in Mama's Snatch. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. so I'm just asking you, how do you keep half the of it? The other half is just in the back of your dick. That's why you have to pee. After you have sex, because in between the suction, your body automatically wants to clean out whatever that she had in her dirty <laughs> vag. So yeah. you, you don't this, get a UTI. You know, it's so weird what people know about sperm. Like I don't know how many. Like sperm is the we. All you need is one little aggressive little guy. That's it. Yeah. Oh that's yeah. That's it. Now. My loads are a gallon and a half. You ever see the size of my nuts? I, you know what the chance is? Unfortunately, I have. Right, right now, I'm holding like two pints right now. I'm a pint over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go home and get mama a stab in this afternoon before we pick up Yum Yum Kids. <laughs> but it's true. Like one little, it's just, I didn't know this. I learned when I went to prison. They made yeah. you watch a film. They showed all the black people. Before you have kids, watch these videos and shit because... I swear to God, one, one. it was so racist. They made all the black inmates go to this thing because that's hysterical. If you had more than like nineteen kids at one point, they're like, "We gotta and we gotta explain to you <laughs> yeah. what happens." Maybe you're not getting this. <sighs> the reason why you had this was way before the term "baby mama." Okay, you know there were guys in there that just can't. You know, there's women that fucking meet guys in jail. And we'll give you like fun. a half the hand job and get knocked up. All you need is a little bit. And the pressure that see what guys don't know is when we're banging you. Yeah. Right. And we start getting that little ticklish. You already mm. sh- you already shooting little platelets of love. Little little into this pre ejaculatory pre ejaculatory things. Uh, By the, the time you start twitching, and, uh, yeah, they? and you pull it out, and you're like, ooh. We missed it. Well, give her a minute. Look inside that little hole, and you'll see a little <laughs> teardrop come out. A little spooch, a little spooch special. <laughs> oh my god, it's a good thing. Hey, what, what to a family? It's a family podcast. <laughs> no, I, I just love the way you're describing it. Well, what do you want me? It's like getting a little ticklish. It's a little teardrop. Yeah, yeah. you always get that little yeah, well. jingle in your legs <laughs> as a, a kid. You don't know what's going on. Moist up the tip. Doggy style, <laughs> and you and you're standing up. You get that little lightheadedness and. And all of a sudden, you get that little ticklish thing. You already came. You've already pre ejaculated it. By the time you pull out and you see it shooting in the air, and you're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. (laughs) She's already got a little centimeter that's swimming his way through. Yeah. That's not good. No. (laughs) So after two years of me, two, three years of me dating my wife, I didn't knock her up. I'm like, this is never going to happen. Yeah. So it's Lloyd's a hoe. 
ain't no pulling out here. Shoot it. You're going to walk a little funny, a little yeah. squeaky. <laughs> A little drippy. Your underwear is going to be yeah, a little drippy drippy. in about two hours at work. You're going to feel it slipping out of your leg. A little baby Joey oh. with no ears. My, I need, I feel like my husband needs a baby. You're like, Does uh, he? How old is your husband? 34. Okay. So he's, I mean, I've never met a dude where I'm like, this dude should be a dad. Because I've dated comics where you're like, this, this guy can't be the father of my child. This guy's weeping in his pillow every night. So this is the first stable dude where I'm like, he needs a baby. How happy are you not that there's one involved with comedian? So I didn't know that this is what it's like. Like, he'll literally ask me, he's like, what did they do to you? And I'm like, oh, God, I got stories. I got stories about these animals I dated. I had a brief affair with a comic for about six months. And I think back at it now, and it was just horrific. Yeah. It was just horrific. Oh, we were... Uh, I mean, I had a dude who fucked a hooker in my room. We had hooked up, and then I didn't sleep with him. And then he, we were in two different rooms in Vegas. And I, he was like, oh, ask for my room key. And then he went downstairs and got a hooker and fucked her in my room after we made out. So I'm like, I didn't even know that was in the realm of possibilities of shit that could happen. And then I just took, like, a Silkwood shower and cried and then didn't date people for, like, a year and a half after. Yeah, come pretty bad two comics just and, not you know, good i had a girl rachel came in there wilson and she's like but you're arguing she goes look at ralphie and Lana. look at i think there's three power couples now right, right? rich and bonnie and rich tom and, and christina tom and christina i go that's that's a, a rarity yeah they did it the right way or they plan going on the road you know it's what i think when you start going on the road together <sighs> and you're involved together that's when it gets ugly it's too much if like, you if you're a comic and then you become a tv writer mm -hmm. and i'm a comic or just a road comic i think it'll work yeah if you have some sort of different thing right. to pull from we'll some pull different from. interest but if we're both road co comics you and i both know and you could admit this you're to gone. the audience is there when you date a comic after a while is there a little bit of a competition yeah of course I've or especially always... i think as a woman like i've dated comics where he just i'd come home and he'd still not be on the road and you're like oh this dude's just sitting on the couch and i'm hurling my body every week and my, i'm tired my face is getting tired and this asshole's just sitting on the fucking couch you're like get up go and try to get more work and then they blame you or you would see that's that's the thing that started to scare me when i had my brief encounter and this is 98 it was it went from us just having fun to why do you get those calls and i don't mm. and that's never gonna I be can, good i can't have it i can't have that no you know? my my husband just thinks it's cool like he watched my special like he's like oh it gets better every time I'm like does it really <laughs> does it but he thinks it's neat and i've never had that with a dude where there was no level of competition he just thinks what That's i do is not. cool and he's encouraging and he believes when i you know he has room to believe because he doesn't if you're a comic and you have to like fight for your own dreams but he doesn't have to do that he has his own separate thing so he can fight for me to have my dreams Pretty fucking neat. What's your response been so far from the Netflix? It's special? been great. All positive. There's one useless twat that hated me. But no, other no, no. than that, I mean, as far as the shows, the people, people, people have been coming responded. out, and they're yeah, they're coming out, which is nice. I feel like my numbers went up, even in Tampa on a hurricane. My numbers were up from the last year. You do side splitters? Yeah, I do side splitters. Good club. Yeah, do you do it? Do you, no, no, I've never done it. Oh, I, I like only, it. I've only done uh, the improv. In Tampa. Okay. No, I like side splitters. I feel like the independent clubs, it's like I like when you go back and the staff's still the same because at least there's some sense of family. You're not as lonely, I think, or it, like the chain, more corporate clubs. I feel like the turnover is high. Like I know that I go back and it's always the same dude at the bar or the same waitress staff. And you're like, you just know what you're getting. There's uh, even that, even just going the different comedy clubs mm -hmm. and see them. Like I had a list. Like when I was coming up, there was a com a comic newspaper called Just for Last, mm -hmm. and it came out of San Francisco. It was uh, published by John Fox, and it was a bunch of comics yeah. who put your money where your mouth is. You mm -hmm. say you want to be a writer, write me an interview every yeah. week. You interview, you write an article about the state of comedy. I'll write an article about this, and they put a paper together. Yeah. 
But at the last two pages were every club, state by state, you know, Alabama, you know, fucking Connecticut, and you could just circle the clubs and go some day I'm gonna play there, you know. Yeah. I don't even know if they have those lists anymore, like all the clubs. And you don't really have a list of all the clubs because they all open and shut. Yeah. So quickly sometimes, you know. Uh you don't like the chains. Oh, I do. I mean, like I, I like I like all of them. I don't really care if I like a club. I don't care if it's a chain or not. No, I mean I don't care about that. I just feel like with the staff, it feels more like a family. Like if I go right, to no, Zanies and right. there's you know three Zane, it's like well Bert Haas is always going to be there. If I go to Tampa, it's always Bobby Ju. Like it's always going to be the same. Is Bert still there? Yeah, Bert's still there. Still dressing up. Still has a pocket square. Still looks fancy. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's what thing, I like, though. You get the relationship with the different comic club owners. and I loved featuring. I really had a good time featuring. I learned a lot yeah. featuring, and I and I embraced it. Like most people feature, I'm going with the headline. You're yeah. not going nowhere. Yeah. So you might as well learn how to <laughs> be a well fucking well tremendous, tremendous feature. feature. The best you can be. Just be take hard, your too time. hard to follow. And yeah, three, four years do. of feature work, three, four years. And, and that's a perfect 52 spot. Weeks. Perfect spot. You're done. No pressure. Sure. You can no hang out by the tickets. bathroom and pick out drunk chicks. Yeah. When they go to puke, you can rub their back <laughs> as they puke and help them. And, come on, I got a room to put you in like that trap boy. But we ain't locking the door. You know what I'm saying? Aww. You know, it's just, it's a different attitude. You're just going in to be a killer. And some headliners you're friends with, mm -hmm. and some are just dicks. Yeah. And some are on the borderline, and you get to see different comics. Every and who, what type of comic do you want to be? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like I, one of the th memories that sticks out in my mind today, big time comic, opened up for him in Dallas. I went outside, and there was a huge line. And I went back in, I go, you know, there's a huge line out there for you. He goes, fuck those assholes. And I remember going, Hmm. Huh, why? And I remember going, wow, if I ever had learned, yeah. I would definitely be out there. With them. And this is way before pictures. They just wanted to shake your hand. And meet you. He didn't want to meet nobody. And I don't even, understand that. If they're coming out, you have to forget. That, like, I feel like pe people forget that the people that come to comedy shows, that might be, they might have three kids. That might be their entertainment for the next three months. They might not get another break. So how dare people, when people are paying for two tickets, drinks, maybe a babysitter, gas prices, that might be their most expensive evening out as a family. Like, that's their date night. So you, they're, you're there to entertain them. That's what bothers me about two show nights. Yeah. Two show nights. Especially for me, I don't like two show nights anymore. No? Just one? No, because now I do, like, either comedy clubs or, like, medium theaters. Yeah. So sometimes they add a second show, and, like, New York sold out in June for yeah. December. I'm from Jersey. Yeah, yeah it's going to sell out, so... Yeah, the second show, but I don't like it because the theater doesn't want you going out because people are trying to leave and then people are trying to get in and then they're trying to take pictures mm -hmm. and now you have this madness. Like Milwaukee, I did 420. I felt terrible. I did two shows. I shouldn't have done two shows. Yeah. And that's what, like this week I'm in Chicago, I'm doing one show. Why? I want to sit there for an hour yeah. afterward. And chat with people. And chat people and take pictures. I don't sell merch. Yeah. Yeah. I don't sell merch because I don't want to take them for everything they got. Yeah. I'd rather them come up to me and say, hey, I didn't like the podcast with, with you and Lee, or yeah. the podcast helped me, or now I booked a trick ticket to Florence <laughs> because April Macy's got a restaurant there. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't want there to be a gap between us and them. Well, I think that's all they're looking for most of the time is just a human connection. And I like that's what kind of stand up comedy is. You have like a group think mentality where people come in and everybody's not kind of on the same team to enjoy their night. So well, when I shake your hand and take a picture of you, that's a completion of the circle. Mm -hmm. That's a completion of feeling connected to you. That's it. Yeah. I sent, put on a podcast. You listened to it. One day you made a comment. Mm hmm. I replied to you as a gentleman, mm -hmm. and now we start a little dialogue in between us. We're not best friends, yeah, but we acknowledge each other on Facebook. If you put a picture of your ugly kid up, <laughs> I'll say, <"Yeah." laughs> if I put a picture of my ugly kid up, yeah. you'll say, yeah. And you really, you really human put interaction. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, that person will say to you, hey, I see you coming to Chicago. Yeah. I live in whatever, I'm doing a two hour drive. 
and you meet them after the show and you shake their hand and you give them a hug and you take a picture. It's two minutes of and your time. And people are happy. And that's it. Yeah. It's the people that come in and go, can I ask you a question about Joe Rogan? Get the fuck like, out of here. <laughs> can I ask you a question about episode 22 of the podcast? Listen, I just did an hour on stage. I don't, I don't know, know about that. Yeah. You know, yesterday I got a guy. Can you leave a message on my phone? I go, why would I want to do that? Yeah. And he goes, can I go, if I do it for you, I got to do it for everybody else. He goes, I won't tell nobody. Except the people that call you, you fucking moron. <laughs> 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 you fucking yeah. idiot. I go, I don't, you know, I don't want to do cameo. I don't want to do none of that shit. But I want to meet people who listen to the podcast. Yeah, I also feel like sometimes there's audience members that you do really connect with. Like in Tampa, there was this couple, this interracial older couple. They were in their 60s. And then they would come every time I was there. And then uh, he got sick. He had brain cancer. And they weren't there for a few years. And I remember when they came back because he got well. I cried. I'm like, oh, my God, Frank and, and June yes, are back. Yes. And there was something like so human about it. We're like, oh, I'm so glad to see these audience members. Because I had wondered every time. I'd be like, oh, I wonder if they're going to come. I wonder if he had passed away. And to see them back in the audience was so satisfying. And to know he got through whatever illness he had had. And they were back to enjoying life. So you're like, well, that's nice. It's fucking, I'm still in awe just seeing you. Because I yeah. haven't seen you in so long. It's been years. And I look at you and like. Do you remember you walking in one night? You had like a little hat on. Oh. You wore like some little fucking, uh, I think it was like a French stewardess. Little I was dressed on. like an you asshole. Used, you used to put on some fucking <laughs> tremendous outfits. I'm like, this chick's got the balls of a fucking elephant. I didn't know. So I've always dressed like an fuck. asshole. Oh, no, you look I beautiful. Know. I just, I just always loved your style oh. and how you, uh, it's great to see that you're still out there doing your thing. Oh, what else can I do? And I'm happy you're not involved with a comic anymore. I got no that. life skills. This is it. This is the only thing I've ever you been go good at. What? No, go. look at me. I dropped out. I went to University of Florida for two and a half years, and I was pretty fucked up. I mean, I, I had a bad, weird childhood. So everybody died. And then, so when I was 17, my parents never let me do anything. Like, I was not equipped for life at 17. My dad was, no, no boys. There was a lot of like, no boys. And then I was just gobbling wieners. Yes, <laughs> it was forbidden. So just gobbling dick meat for Is that, years. Do you think that's uh, just because I have a daughter? I think if you're really overprotective, like boys weren't allowed to call my house. My parents were married really young and they had me young. So I think they just tried to prevent me from making the same mistakes they did. But in doing that... If you tell somebody you can't have tangerines, they're going to want to fucking rub tangerines on their face. It's the same if men are forbidden. You're like, give me all the... And I had abandonment issues from a lot of deaths. But then I was just gobbling wieners. A lot of death. Deaths. Like, my grandparents died. My aunt died. Like, I just dealt with a lot of a lot of tragedy as a kid. So I think when you have abandonment shit and it's forbidden, it was like the perfect combination to just take all have all the dicks <laughs> just so, collect them don't do it don't be overprotective with your daughters or they'll be getting I mean, I, I come from a different world uh april so i'm very like i know what the world is about yeah. i know who's out there my wife is a little bit on the whatever side i don't fucking play you know i'm raising her to be know tough what two and two is when mm -hmm. we do the podcast we do it 15 minute podcast i make a read a homework assignment it's yeah. 10 minutes but the other 20 minutes i'm just talking to her yeah and i'm just saying little things to her just so she knows i write her a journal every day i write oh. you know in a journal what i'm feeling i just started writing about my life you know it's really her, sweet that i went to prison yeah because yeah. i don't want somebody telling me the wrong shit yeah you got it from the horse's mouth it's yeah. on paper yeah and this is my second notebook so Hopefully, when I die, she gets the fucking notebooks and she learns the truth. Before, oh, that's beautiful. Though. Before some jerk off says, well, on YouTube, he said he robbed the jewelry store. Well, mm -hmm. I got the proof here, fucking yeah. jerk off. Yeah. Is, it wasn't a jewelry <laughs> store. It was a liquor store, you yeah. dumb fuck. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So like, but that's really, it's really sweet. I think that because of my exposure to, I've been exposed to, you've been exposed to a lot of fucking yeah. men. Things that you went home and said, wow, yeah. what happened here? What's wrong? What, what, what happened, happened here? Yeah. What happened here? When you're, especially when you live in L.A. And you see how people act and you see the, the things that people do for fame or just for a little bit of success. 
you have to ask yourself, what happened here? Mm -hmm. You know? And like I said, I've been a lot of, I've only been with like one comic, maybe two or something like that sexually. But I have a lot of comic friends as women and you look at them and go, they're my friend. I got their back no matter what. Yeah. But something happens. Something there. happened. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm not gonna ask. I don't I don't need to do an intervention. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be that much of a friend, but I know that Well, I think something any, happened. Anybody that requires that constant stream of validation, it's that's not a normal thing to want, to need like the constant nightly adoration and love from somebody. So you're like, well, where didn't they get it early on during the formative years? Like, why do you, I mean, I know for me, it's like I obviously didn't have enough love growing up, so now I need it from everybody I meet. Every audience, every every fan. You want that adoration. See, for me, I think I had a parent, I had parent, I had a mother and a stepfather who were an audience. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Trust me, I always had an audience. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I wasn't loved, I was, yeah. I think with me, my comedy comes from the same place where your comedy comes from. And it's from being pain and mm -hmm. having to talk yourself off a ledge. All the time. You know, yeah. that's, like, I'm very good at talking people off ledges. Why? Because I've for been years I talked myself off, off fucking ledge. ledges. You yeah. know, what's a ledge, Joey? A tough time in your life when you have to make a tough decision when some people just fucking tie a knot. Yeah. Some I people jump off a building. No, and I feel like that was my escape. And that plus it was the escape from my parents. Like, I feel like our house was so filled with sadness that, like, I was the pressure valve where I could, like, if I could get a laugh out of somebody, <clears throat> like, you didn't see that in a house. Like, if when people have AIDS, when people are, like, have mental illness, like, you're constantly dealing with all of this sh pile of shit. If you can get somebody to smile in their day. So it was so satisfying early growing up getting laughs out of my parents because I don't think they had a tremendous amount of happiness themselves so i think that kind of trickles into adult life now people have hard lives that's why i think you see comedy or people write you the most satisfying thing is when people are like oh, i haven't laughed in months to know somebody else was going some through something tragic and they connected enough with you paid their entertainment dollar and you gave them a little release from that pain for a little bit i think is a really beautiful thing that's why people should, everybody should just like comics April Macy, I love you. <laughs> Where can these savages find uh, you? Just AprilMacy.com, uh, April Macy on social media, M-A-C-I-E. They can find me on Tiffany Haddish Presents, They Ready, uh, streaming on Netflix, and just driving around town. That's about I'm, it. I'm happy you didn't jump off a plane. Oh, look at Thank you. You would have jumped off with eight guys. Oh, I was going to do that with today. Dicks. Did you see them? No, no women showed. No, no. Me and Ida, Ida and I were going to do that today. They were going to torture you. They were that... going to land first and lay on their backs. <laughs> I'll wait for me to fall on their dicks. Yeah. <laughs> all of them. They were all going to lay and see who got lucky. <laughs> they were going to get like a raffle ticket like Connor and see who got lucky and shit. Did you see who ended up going? Oh, it was like, like Chris Porter. I saw them all yeah, last night. Yeah, yeah. Chris Porter, Jim Jeffries, Martin Moreno. Titus, did Titus of, go? I don't think, I didn't oh, see okay. Titus in the picture. I did want to go. I felt like I need to get past fears in my life. She's like, what time are we doing it? At one o'clock. The only problem is I have, Mercy has, uh, Whatever the fuck you call yeah, it. Yeah. Taekwondo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Adorable. Yeah, I was going to jump out of a plane. Uh, um. So it was, uh, I have to get over there. But you were like, I'm going to jump out of a plane. I was like, no. No. You know, yeah. I like what you but said. You like, if like, you want to sell tickets, you come go, and do bitch. this. If let's you want to be in the, if you want to jump out of a plane, join the fucking Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> He'd get mad at you for riding a bike. There's no way he's going to let you jump out of a plane. Yeah, I don't want nobody jumping out of a plane. I don't want nobody jumping out of Because I'm so scared. I wanted to do it. Did you? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. It's I want to get fun. past fears in life. Like, I feel no, like, I you know, the same thing. certain boundaries that, like, keep you held, hold you back. I'm like, well, either I die or I've just worked past a fear. Next, I'll get into a tank with a shark or something. It was funny because this morning I was thinking about you when I went on because I went, I got up, school, breakfast. And then I went somewhere, and then I got back, and I went on Twitter, and I saw the pictures. Yeah. So I had to go to the bathroom. And while I was walking to the bathroom, I was thinking about what the fuck would have happened. Like, I would love to jump off a plane. Like, yeah. I can't believe I said something to her yeah. about going on a plane because... Well, I didn't see either either, so I, just, I knew something. Well, we were going to do it together. We, we were kind of two lady so, hand holders. 
And I said, you know what? That, that's something I always wanted to do. Yeah. I just, I got to do it with the right people. That's I'm what I the felt like. Of, the Golden I Knights. I feel like if you're going to jump, you might as well jump with army dudes who are jumping all the time. Oh, did Bronston Jones do that? I don't know. A couple people. Yeah, yeah. one of okay. yeah. See, they're all Yeah, but I think Bronston, he did with the army. He lost a yeah. little bunch of weight over the past month. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He didn't pull the fucking uh, Lee on the zip line. <laughs> you lie no. to the people at the zip line. Place. Same thing, they make you wait. God damn it. Don't be bullshitting. You listen to me real quick before we got some time. You have any dates coming up? Right um, now? I do. I'm uh, This weekend, I'm in uh, with Tiffany Haddish at the Indiana University Auditorium with Ida and Shante. I'm at Rooster Tea Feathers in Sunnyvale. And then I'm at Penguins. And then Is I'm, that fucking place still open? It sure is. The and same I still accountant, go there. The I don't same know. Engineer. The one that was flooded. Yeah. I don't know what his name is. He was uptight. He didn't want to pay. Jeff Johnson. Is that he's I still there? Be. Yeah, I think so. Oh my God! Send them yeah. my love. That <laughs> uh, I will be in Chicago this weekend at the Chicago Theater. There's still a few tickets left. October 11th, the Uptown Theater in Kansas City, and Denver. The second show has been added at the Paramount. Tickets are still available. Real fucking quick. Let me just mention the sponsors, and I'll get you motherfuckers out of here. All right. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you today by Upstart. Most of us find out the hard way that getting into debt is easy. Getting out of debt is hard, especially if your credit cards, if your credit score isn't great. They offer you smarter interest rates to help you pay off your credit debt. That's what Upstart does, all right? Upstart goes beyond the traditional credit score. Your Upstart interest rate is based on your education and your job history, not just your credit score. They actually reward you for going to school. So Upstart doesn't care about the bills you didn't pay five years ago. They care about the person you are now, today, and they give you a rate based on that. Plus, they make it fast, simple, easy to check your rate in just a few minutes without affecting your credit score. And the best part is, you ready? Once the loan is accepted, most people get their funds the very next day. The next day. Over 300,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit card, school loans, or to fund their weddings in Greece uh, <laughs> and to make large purchases. Free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt today by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. It's that easy. I'm telling you, this is the way to go. See why Upstart is ranked number one in that category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot. Hurry to upstart.com slash Joey. Again, upstart.com slash Joey. Listen, if you're in debt, you got to start somewhere. I had to start with one of these things about 20 years ago after my divorce. So please go to Upstart. Over 300,000 people have used Upstart. They are number one in their category. So please, upstart.com slash church to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes, and it will not it will not affect your credit. That's upstart.com slash church. <laughs> the church is also brought to you by, are you ready? Listen to me. You ever call your bookie, he's not around, or he gives you a higher line. Let's say you live in New England, in Boston, and you go to bet New England. The line is always going to be higher in that area because there's more fans. That shit stops today. Listen, we're going on week three. Week three? Four. Week fucking four, and you're still telling me you went 2-0, and oh, but you didn't win a dime. If you find $100 in the street, would you walk past it, or would you pick it up? Yeah, you'd pick it the fuck up. So why do you keep picking winners and not betting them? Listen, go to my bookie. It's fast, it's easy, and they pay when you win. Let's face it, where you're betting is just as important as who you're betting on. So if you're trying to bet the NFL... Baseball, UFC, Bellator, MMA, whatever. My bookie's got it. I wouldn't be telling you guys to bet with them if they weren't the fucking best, all right? So do the smart thing. If you're going to bet this football season, college football, the fucking playoffs are coming in baseball, the World Series, there's a fountain of money coming your way. 1-800-GAMBLER if you have a gambling problem. If you're that kind of guy that likes to bet a little and win a lot, try a parlay. If all your picks come through, 
you multiply your winnings. And no matter how you bet, the NFL season is the best time of the fucking year. I'm, I'll tell you what, what I'm going to do here. Double your deposit right now today. Use promo code CHURCH, C-H-U-R-C-H, to get 100% bonus on your initial deposit up to $1,000. You put 500 in, we give you a nickel. You put 100 in, we give you a, hard, a yardstick. Visit mybookie.ag today. That's mybookie.ag. And don't forget to use promo code CHURCH, C-H-U-R-C-H, when creating your account to claim the bonus. My bookie, you play, you win, you get paid. And listen, check Instagram tomorrow. I'm dropping a video with my one pick of the week. I'll teach you how to place the bets on my bookie. You'll be saying Uncle Joey's a fucking savage. Catch me on Instagram on my fla- Matt Flavor World. How oh, you like that, cocksuckers? Oh, I love you, motherfuckers. <laughs> Don't forget, Honor is running the contest. 30 count, 90 count, Alpha Brain or the powder. You get a raffle ticket. Details on Monday for all you motherfuckers. I love you. Don't forget to support April Macy. She's Aww. a fucking savage. I got nothing but respect for her. Aww. She's Thank hung you. in this motherfucker. <laughs> I through sure thick am. and thin. She's <laughs> taking sh- load shots to the face. She's done it so all. So many load she shots. She don't give a fuck. <laughs> she still shows up to the dance, and I'm very happy you're Aww. married. You Thank look prettier you. than ever. You're always welcome to visit us here Thank whenever you. you're in town. Thanks. And for you motherfuckers, I love you. I'll be seeing Bob Lalingus and Josh from 10th Planet and All By Boys Friday in Chicago at the Chicago Theater, 8 o'clock. Kate Quigley and Dean Delray will be there fucking around. So I'll see you cocksuckers then. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you for Rosh Hashanah. Happy Rosh Hashanah to the Jewish community. I love you guys. And don't forget, 1-800-GAMBLER. Kick this fucking mule, Lee.